for ZDNet. I'm Karen Roby. I'm talking today with Daphne LaPrance Rangay. You know, uh, Daphne, all of the talk right now surrounding COVID, of course, we're, we're focusing on this vaccine and getting it distributed. And what will happen down the line in terms of, of travelers, people leaving countries and trying to come back in? Uh, vaccine passports. This is one of the things that we've been talking about a lot, or we're starting to hear some buzz about this. Uh, before we get into to who's working on this, this digital platform, uh, just explain a little bit more about what it is. So in very simple terms, the vaccine passport, as you said, um, would be a sort of digital version of the yellow cards that are already issued by the World Health Organization. Um, so yellow cards are a document that sums up or has a, a record of all the vaccinations that you've had in your life uh, and that you can present when you need it to sort of prove your health credentials. Um, so the idea of a vaccine passport would be to translate that in the digital world. So for example, if I went to get a vaccine, um, the health organization that's vaccinating me would be able to deliver a digital certification of that vaccine. Um, and then if I'm ever required to prove my health credentials, for example, if I'm traveling or if I'm going to my workplace or to school, um, I'd be able to show that uh, digital certificate either with my phone, um, and if I don't have a phone with a QR code that has been uh, printed out for me by the health organization. Um, so presumably this would allow for a smoother process and for a faster reopening of public places. Um, I mentioned traveling, uh, I mentioned workplaces and schools, but also mass events, for example, uh, that might have certain health requirements uh, and, and notably vaccine requirements. Um, there's a few tech companies uh, that have already jumped on the opportunity to develop these type of platforms. Uh, earlier this month, Microsoft, Salesforce and Oracle all signed up to a vaccine uh, record, record system uh, initiative that would allow you to have a, a sort of a health wallet app in your smartphone uh, that you could just show to, to a verifier when required to prove your health credentials. Um, the WHO actually earlier this year, uh, last year, sorry, signed an agreement with the government of Estonia, which is uh, uh, famous for its uh, ability to, to develop digital solutions for public services, uh, to find an international solution that all countries could adhere to um, in order to, as I said, reopen the borders and enable international travel to resume again. So they've been piloting this solution with a platform called Vaccine Guard that's quite similar to uh, the initiative that Microsoft, Salesforce and Oracle are working on uh, with the added feature that they use blockchain technology to um, track the vaccine jabs from the moment of manufacture all the way to the moment that they are being administered to the patients. Um, so that adds a sort of layer of, of security in the sense that it's possible to uh, trace back those jabs uh, and make sure that they are authentic and not counterfeit product. Uh, so there's only two examples and, and there will be many more to come um, with many tech companies who have already uh, shown their interest in working on this project. Uh, so certainly a lot more platforms will be developed in the weeks and in the months to come to, to create this vaccine passport. Okay, and, and, and Daphne, with uh, you know, the different the number of, of companies that are involved in trying to uh, bring this to fruition, there's got to be a lot of challenges too along the way. What have they uh, you know, talked about here in terms of some of this roadblocks that they have to come overcome? So interestingly, the challenges aren't necessarily technological. As I said, there are many companies working on this and there are tech solutions already ready uh, for deployment and already being piloted in countries like Estonia. Um, the problem really isn't about making sure that you can create a digital version of, of a vaccine certificate. Rather, it's about making sure that you can trust that these certificates come from an authentic source. So, for example, if I am vaccinated in a hospital in London, how is the verifier in another country supposed to know that this hospital is trusted and that it's delivered a trusted certificate? So, in a way, this is about creating an architecture a framework that different countries and different organizations can all adhere to to make sure that the certificates going on on these platforms are all trustworthy. Um, so it's something that's going to happen at the public policy scale, at public health scale. Uh, it's a much bigger challenge in a way than creating a technological platform. Um, and really that, that challenge is what was at the heart of the WHO's agreement with the government of Estonia was to create this international trust framework, aligned standards uh, that all countries could adhere to in order to make sure that everything that goes on on these platforms and on these vaccine passport platforms um, is trustworthy and is authentic. So um, it's it's a big challenge and it's been something that the government of Estonia and the WHO have been working on for many years, even before COVID. 
um, and, and in a way it's the bigger challenge rather than the technological one. And, you know, when you talk about anything really COVID related, everything's been fast tracked, of course, as we're trying to move things so quickly. Any idea on a timeline here? So it's hard to tell, obviously, especially when it comes to making sure that all countries around the world or as many countries around the world all adhere to one single uniform standard or trust framework. Uh, so Estonia, as I said, has been working on this even before COVID. Uh, they've been doing a lot of groundwork with different governments, notably in Hungary and in Iceland, and they're hoping that more and more countries will join that framework as, as we go forward and as countries carry out their mass vaccination programs. Um, but even if that trust framework is effectively uh, developed, you have to count with the argument against uh, vaccine passports as a concept. Uh, there's a lot of activism against these passports because they represent some people a very intrusive technology. It's dealing with very sensitive data, health data. Um, and what's more, it could potentially create more inequality between people who have been vaccinated and people who haven't been vaccinated, uh, whether that is by choice or because they, they um, haven't been able to access a vaccine. Uh, so if I start being denied travel, for example, because I haven't been vaccinated, for some people that's problematic because it's creating a new form of inequality. Uh, so again, there's a bigger debate to, to be had there. Um, and even once the technology is here, even once the trust framework is here, um, there will be more challenges to overcome in terms of public acceptance of, of the project as a whole. Yeah, so many layers uh, involved here, uh, Daphne. Well, much more, of course, on uh, this vaccine passport, what you need to know, and much more on ZDNet. We hope you guys will check it out there. Thanks for watching.